after a year and a half, I am finally finishing transforming the first area in my old house. This is the kitchen and my boot room or back entrance if you like. And wow, it's been a wild ride. Especially since I have no budget and I decided to do everything myself. I'm going to share the whole start to finish process with you from what it looked like when I first bought it to the design process and the finishing touches like attaching the slide. And lastly, I'm also going to share the cost for everything, including the walls and floors, the kitchen counter that I made and the two joinery unit, the center shelving unit slash wardrobe, which I created within both the kitchen and the boot room area and the recessed unit which I made for a shoe storage in the boot room. But I'll leave that for the end of the video. For now, let's backtrack and get back to what it looked like when I first moved in. The space I decided to tackle first was actually an extension done in the 50s. These are the two back rooms in the house and they're actually both used as a kitchen. One was still outfitted as a kitchen and the other one had most of the kitchen cabinets and old stuff already ripped out. When I began the design for the house, I wanted to create a uniform base and then work with detailing and color to create pockets of interest. The house is only 45 square meters and the ceilings are quite low at 2.2 meters, which is why I thought this was the best approach to create a peaceful interior for a house that sits surrounded by forests. This is also why I'm opting to build in most of the furniture and joinery as opposed to collecting different pieces of furniture. The only downside is that I have no actual experience building anything. So the design needs to be simple enough as well for me to be able to tackle it by myself. This is another reason for using lots of timber and for the minimalist design approach, which has been very much influenced by both Scandinavian and Japanese interiors. When I first started thinking about the envelope for the space, I was thinking about using veneer or plywood as a base for the walls. My plan was to apply sheets to create a warm but clean look and to lay trim details on top of that. But I quickly realized cost was going to play a huge part in my decision making and that some of the trim ideas didn't really work well with lower ceilings. So instead I found affordable B-grade hung and groove planks and decided I could use this as a base throughout. The panelling turned into very basic vertical trims which adds to the illusion of higher ceiling. And what I actually really like is how this detailing refers back to original facade details in Swedish buildings which adds another dimension to the overall design. The kitchen and the boot room are going through the biggest change in this house. I decided quickly to get rid of the interior wall in between the two spaces so I could make a bigger kitchen and add in a small toilet as well as I only have an outhouse on this plot. That creates a functional back entrance with storage for shoes and coats and I also opted for a long kitchen counter that wraps around the space and takes advantage of the morning light as that's the only light that this entire space receives throughout the day. I'm also adding in a large joinery unit for the refrigerator and pantry items which wraps around the original stove in the middle of the space. The same joinery unit also holds the coat in the boot room area and an old hidden storage space under the staircase will be transformed into a recessed storage unit for shoes, gloves and a portable washing machine. Once I had my initial design, I began to work on fixing up this building. It didn't quite go to plan because there was some structural damage. There had been a water leak in the blue room. So after demolishing the kitchen and the interior wall, I took out an exterior wall, a window, moved it to the other side of the kitchen. I replaced ceiling joists, demolished the old floor and put in a new one added new walls for the new compost toilet and then finally I was ready for the interior. This is when I started breathing again and I applied tongue and groove planks to the floors and the walls. In the meantime, I'd actually quickly built a small kitchen countertop section because I'd ripped out the old one and I obviously needed the sink for daily use. It was freestanding and wonky and my relief when I was finally able to fix the countertop to the finished walls and extend it was absolutely palpable. This is when the building side finally started to begin looking like an actual house again. 
Once I started building the kitchen, it was relatively simple. The design was a little Japanese inspired, very simple and minimal with some interesting connection details. I do go into a bit more detail on this kitchen in my kitchen overview video and I'll link that in case you would like to check that out. After the kitchen, it was time for the recessed unit under the staircase. It was going to be painted, so I got the cheapest wood I could find and started to put it together. It really wasn't that easy. The design is simple, but using tongue and groove meant that the entire unit kept skewing sideways. I used nails mostly to put it all together, and during the build, it genuinely just looked like the ugliest thing i would ever made. The timber was such bad quality and you could just see how rustic it was even after painting the entire unit. I really thought I would end up with a very clean cover but that wasn't the case at all. So I definitely needed to adjust my expectations while I was building that one. Something else that went wrong was the size of it. I made it a little bit smaller than the existing opening in the wall. My plan was to be able to actually take out the unit because the space that was available is actually a lot bigger than the unit I created. However, the unit ended up only barely fitting and I put so much effort into putting it into place and bashing it into place that I will never be able to take it out again unless I demolish it. Lastly, this large joinery unit centered within the space was going to really finish the space. To cut costs, I ended up with a slightly unorthodox building style. Usually to create a built-in unit like this, you would build an open box for each section, slide it into place and add trims to the front. But that means that every side has two pieces of MDF sandwiched together, requiring more details, which of course makes it more expensive. So instead, I created a very minimal design. I fixed the top and bottom structures to the floor and ceiling, and then I slid the side panels in between. This saved on lots of materials and kept the cost down. Another way to stick to my small budget was to use MDF. I have to say I really would have preferred to use plywood. I adapted the design to fit around the standard size in which these MDF sheets came, which is why the depth of the refrigerator is the standard size of MDF and so is the wardrobe. The narrow sections are half the size of this. Now after caulking and painting a final coat, it is time for the finishing touches to really polish the space off before I move on to the next area in this house. There are just a few outstanding items that are really going to bring this place to a closure. 
it's time to make a piece of countertop for the little bit of countertop section that's going to be right next to the old-fashioned stove. I'm cutting it out of this where it's the same countertop as the rest of the kitchen. I have this one centimeter sticking out on both sides, which I think looks quite nice and minimal. Okay, I cannot for the life of me decide whether this should be the same stain as the rest of the countertops or a darker one just to differentiate it from everything else. I'm gonna do the darkest stain and I actually have some wood left over for that if I really don't like it. I can change it. Let's just go for it. something a little bit different. I need a new base for my water filter, the countertop water filter. It's sitting on top of a plate and now I have a plate that I can't use. Um, so I decided to, to just quickly make something with scrap wood. Okay, I am missing one really big thing, which is something for towels, which is why I've been doing this. <laughs> and I was really going to make my own towel rail and I had this whole concoction in mind with this little shelf to hold fruit and it was going to be this big thing and then I was thinking back about the lampshade I made for the toilet last spring and I was thinking no maybe maybe I shouldn't because I'm making so many things maybe I should just buy a towel rail and I actually did I bought a towel rail and I've got a little shelf they are both from the same brand they're both from house doctor and I found out about this brand because H&M home actually sells some of the products um, some of their lights and in fact I have a wall light from them as well which I'm very excited about didn't make my own light this time decided to invest um, I got them in a sale and so I have a little rail like this it's very simple it's it's like blackened iron so it's a has a nice quality to it this shelf which I'm not entirely sure about but it has a little bit like a very minimalist industrial feel so I 
quite like that and they kind of go together i hope it doesn't look too bathroomy i'm gonna put it up here and i'm excited about having something functional Next task is to put in this little bit of floor threshold. This is the wall light I have and I'm going to find a position for it. Cute, right? Can't make this myself. Okay, so I'm thinking to put it here because that means I could use it on this side and on this side or perhaps down here one of the last things i need to do is to change this i have a light and it's not the perfect light what i would like is to have two pendants come on either side of the sink but the ceiling is quite low and I've only got one hardwired connection and I found this small one when I was with my parents in the Netherlands. It's very, it's cute and I think it suits but it's quite small and I think ultimately it might look really nice in a guest house. I'm going to fix it now and then maybe at one point I'll figure out a better system with nicer lights. Um, but yeah. Either way, I'm going to replace what's there now because it's quite horrid. I'm going a little bit rogue again. I'm fixing a little platform to the bottom of the lampshade because like, it's made for the cord to go into the ceiling, which I can't do. So I'm just adding a little platform. Another way to do it is to drill a hole in the base of the lampshade but I don't have a drill bit, a metal drill bit large enough to do that, so. All right, I am sitting on my kitchen counter and I managed to do this. That took a while. <laughs> So now it's going to be attached to the base of the lights. It was very finicky. I don't know whether it, I did it right. So I'm just gonna see whether it works. And I'm terrified, so. Whoa! Oh! I have a third new light, which is also from House Doctor. It should be sponsored. I was going to get it in black. I don't know, for some reason I just really wanted to try it in brass and have a different, something different, because all the others are black. So I was going to place it right in the middle. To do some cable management here. See? Oh wow, that is very yellow. Oh, that's because of the the brass. It's brass on the inside as well, so that's why it looks so yellow. So that means that I can finally get rid of this light, which has been hanging here for ages. 
it has a really long extension cord which is really useful but I should have enough lighting now <sighs> nice I'm now sort of left over with this hole now this is going to be an oven I already have the oven but it hasn't been installed yet and for now I have been keeping some biggest storage items in here all of the jackeries for example for now I just want it to look a bit cleaner and I have some curtains that I'm just going to put up with a bit of rope I hope you enjoy that process. Let's have a look at the finished footage now.
Let me now share the cost and the materials that I used for this entire project. I would like to add that even though I haven't completely finished all the vertical and horizontal trims in the boot room, I have added the cost for those into this calculation. I have just been doing all of my calculations and let's have a look at this space. Let's see how much it actually cost for me to make this kitchen and the boot room with all of the joinery pieces. I'll use US dollars for now. I think people are mostly familiar with it. I'll add some more currencies on the screen. Let's start with the kitchen. This countertop is about five and a half meters long. So it's quite a good space, especially for one person. Most of this is pine and spruce and lots of it is actually construction timber. All of these uprights are 45 by 45, you know, basic sections. And the framework is also made from 45 by 45s. The shelving are actually used for exterior paneling. I have thin plywood for the kitchen doors. There's a couple of circular sections and rectangular sections to keep the shelves in place. This kitchen counter, including the sink and the tap, cost me about 635 US dollars. And considering the fact that kitchens are very expensive, that is very cheap. I do have a separate electrical hob that's not integrated within the kitchen counter. And I have on top of that, I will have an oven that will be installed, but I haven't installed it yet. So I haven't included it into this calculation. This unit is pretty significant in size. And because of that, I opted to use MDF to make it instead of plywood, which would have been a much nicer material to use. But because I plan on painting it, I thought that was the best, cheapest solution. I used about seven sheets and it includes the shelving section and a wardrobe on the other side with a little rail for coats. And altogether, it came to about 350 US dollars. This little recessed unit is the smallest and the cheapest thing that I made. I built it from the cheapest tongue and groove timber that you can find. It's actually a roofing material, so it's not made to be exposed. But I figured I was going to paint it anyways, and you wouldn't see that it was a cheap material. Now, my other option was to use MDF. I ended up going for this because it was just a little bit cheaper. It doesn't look as clean and minimal and neat <laughs> as I thought it was going to look. I think it was very much more rustic, but I kind of like it having a slightly different texture. Regardless though, there is some 45 by 45 framing in the back, which you can't see, some square sections to rest the shelving on, and some ply for the doors. This unit came to about $110 and lots of sweat, blood and tears. <laughs> Something else that I really wanted to include was the floors and these walls. I think it's so interesting to find out how expensive these things are. I used the same B-grade economy pine tongue and groove and I have trim detailing and a little floor threshold. I did stain it, but I included the stain that I used into the kitchen already. So I'll leave that cost out for this calculation. The floor space of this kitchen is 12 and a half square meters, which is about 135 square feet. I have about 11.3 square meters in flooring, but more than 20 square meters of tongue and groove on the walls. And that's actually where a huge amount of the cost comes into in that I remember ordering materials for it and calculating what I needed for the walls. Um, that was a bit of a shock. My idea to clad everything in wood was a great idea, but also that is the most expensive thing that I'm doing. So when it comes to the flooring and the walls together, the cost is about 850 US dollars, but more than 500 of that is just the timber for the walls. That calm, cabiny, warm feeling that I'm really looking for. So it, it's worth it to me, but it is a high cost. Okay, I have to say, I am pretty shocked at the total cost for these two spaces. Altogether, it's come to about 2,000 US dollars. That is for walls, flooring, a kitchen counter, and two joinery units. And the biggest cost was just the timber in these walls. So there's a couple of items, just to clarify, that I haven't included in this calculation, like 
the lighting, the few accessories that I bought off the shelf just because it's not part of the DIY process. I also haven't included hinges, screws, nails, some brackets. They're all very cheap. Then when it comes to tools that I use, I used a miter saw, circular saw, jigsaw, a little sanding machine and obviously a drill. And I think, I think that's it. <laughs> I think this means that I can finally say that my space is done, which is insane. <laughs> It feels so good. I'm so used to living in a building site that I almost automatically ignore my surroundings and I have to tell myself, look around you. It's done. You can look at your kitchen now. You don't have to despair. I hope that was interesting for you. And in the next video, I am going to start tackling the next room, which is exciting and also terrifying. So I will see you then.